Oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Narrowboat Good Life, and today is our one year anniversary. We've been on the boat for one year, which is incredible. Just think that the time has gone through that fast. Yeah, really is. Um, and so what we're going to do is we've gone through all our bank statements, all our costs, all our receipts, crunched all those numbers, <laughs> <laughs> just to see how much it's actually cost us this in the last twelve months of living on a narrow boat and we have been continuously cruising all that time well we're not right now no as you can see <laughs> the boat hasn't grown we've not you know it's not gone not gone higher <laughs> it's currently on stilts so if you watched our last video you will know that we were coming into the marina to have our boat re because there was a couple of small patches of blacking that had um, come off so uh um yeah we've had it done and I think she's looking brand new she's again looking absolutely <laughs> brand new and we're hopefully going back in the water tomorrow yep fingers which crossed. is one year and a day since been on the boat, so we're almost getting relaunched again. Yeah. So it's like, so we can't wait. We've been, in, been on blocks now for a week. So we're really looking forward to getting back out on the water. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is go through the numbers. You can compare them to your own cost of living. Um, so why don't you pour a glass of wine, pour a beer, and come on inside. See you in a bit. <sighs> got my drink. <laughs> I've got mine too. I've seen the numbers. I, I need, <laughs> That's why I need, I need any more. <laughs> so now we'll run through our costings. Yeah, they're surprising. So, two things you've got to have um, on a boat. One is your boat license. And we spent £1,018 last year for our boat license. So the license comes from CRT, uh, Canal and River Trust, and it uh, basically allows us on any of their waterways. Um, and it varies depending on what um, length of, and width of boat you have. So um, we're 57 foot, um, so we, that's how much ours was. But um, if your boat's longer or shorter, then obviously it costs more or less. But there's a calculator on their website, so uh, you can work out exactly, exactly yeah. how much your license will be. Yeah. Uh, the second thing you've got to have is to get your license, you need boat insurance. Now we went with Craft Insure, and we spent two hundred and fifteen pounds with Craft Insure. Now this varies with different insurers that you go to. Um, some wanted you to have a helms helmsman course, yeah, and there was whatever else. Weird and, terms and conditions of some of them, but but Craft Insure didn't. Um, and yeah, so we're we're quite happy with those, and we're going to go over those again next year. Um, so yeah, we're quite happy with that. Uh, we also put aside, put aside £500 a year for blacking and boat survey, which needs to be done every two to three years. And it's just more of a way of a savings pot, so we don't have a shock every two years or so when we need to have the boat blacked. So we put, put aside £500 for that. Um, we also had to have, because we had a brand new engine, we had to have a service at 25 hours, 50 hours, and 150 hours to keep the warranty guaranteed. Now that cost us 485 pounds uh, last year, but that won't go. That won't be the same in future years. Um, one because I'm going to start doing the servicing myself, and I've just done the service on the engine a few days ago. A lot of bad language I heard <laughs> from inside the boat. Um, it's probably why the engine's not working. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, but. I think it's really important to have a go at this kind of thing and be hands on because sometimes you are out there and um, you need to know a little bit, a little bit of way around your boat and the mechanics of it and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so that's four hundred eighty-five pounds um, for heating the boat. We have a log burner, a wood coal burner, and we use coal and also wood, and we use twenty-five bags of twenty-five kilogram smokeless fuel. Um, which is quite a lot, but we did have the boat really toasty for all the way through the, the cold months. Yeah, and the fire was on 24-7 um, over winter, wasn't it? So. Yeah, yeah. So we spent £450 on coal and also wood. Now, you can go out foraging for wood, um, but we don't. We're not very good at that, are we? <laughs> no. We tried it once, failed, just came back with a muddy boot and a soggy, soggy sock because I fell in a <laughs> pond. <laughs> So that was like... You've got to find dry wood as well, which is quite hard to find. Yeah. So um, wet wood's not very good on your um, on your fire. So um, yeah, we tend to just buy buy wood and buy... and Well, you make kindling, don't you? I make kindling. And we buy little nets of wood and they cost about six, seven pounds for a bag. That'll last you 
10 days. I'm quite happy with that because it burns uh, nice and hot. So um, that's okay. Uh, the next big cost is the diesel. So the way that diesel works on a, on a narrow boat is that you pay uh, some for propulsion and some for heating. And it's about a 60-40 split, which is 60% propulsion, 40% for heating. <laughs> no? No, it's 60% for domestic, 40% for propulsion. Right, okay. <laughs> you get it wrong every time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, we've done about 530 hours on our engine this yeah. year, haven't yeah. we? Um, and that's equated to £900 in diesel. Yeah. Now, the surprising thing was, we, which we didn't budget for right at the start of this, was 25% of that, or about a quarter of that, is just for the engine to be on to charge the batteries in the winter because you get no solar in December, January. It's just a non-starter. Mm -hmm. And we get very little now, so it's not going to charge your batteries. So two to three hours a day when you stood still in the winter, you need the engine on, and that's burning diesel all the time. Yeah. So that, that took quite a bit. Yeah. So £900. Um, the next one on the list is gas. So all of our cooking is done by Cala Gas. And that's all we use gas for, is cooking. Yeah. And we have a 13 kilogram bottle on board and we've used four bottles. So they last about every three months. Yeah. And every vlogger I've seen says the same. Around about three months for, three a, months. Three months for a Cala Gas bottle. bottle. So we've had four and they cost about 40, 45 pounds, but we spent 135 pounds on our Cala Gas for all our cooking. And that's, that's okay, I'm quite pleased with that. Considering how much tea you drink. <laughs> yeah, about 25 cups a day. So that's boiling the kettle every day. Yeah. I think, yeah, about £60 just for tea. Just for tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, two other costs which we've added, but this is down, one down to learning, and not everybody will have this cost. So we have ad hoc marinas throughout the year. So in the last year or so, we've been into ad hoc marinas during the winter or if we go on holiday, and it's just for a few days at a time, or at Christmas, we, the boat was in the marina for three weeks. Was that really three weeks? It was nearly three weeks, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, just when we were visiting family and friends uh, yeah. over Christmas, really. So, yeah, yeah. We're, it's just for extra security. So rather than leaving it out on the... On the on cut. The, on the cut. And we'll probably, going forward, leave it out for a day or two. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, well, once overnight is all right. But um, anything other than that, we, we want to leave the boat somewhere where we know it's going to be safe and secure. So. Yeah. So we're getting a little bit more confident in leaving the boat out. But last year we spent £804 on the boat going into ad hoc marinas. Um, and we and in those marinas we spent £25 worth of electricity as well. So one, the boat doesn't take a lot of electricity, which is a good a bonus point. Um, but we do have been using marinas quite a lot. And I don't think we'll have that such a big cost next year. I think we'll cut that back a bit. And some marinas don't split your electricity and your mooring costs so um we were putting into marinas that included electric which f going forward we're going to try and avoid because we haven't yeah. actually because we've not been on the boat we haven't actually been using that much electric so it's better to go into a marina that splits it and you pay for your electric yeah. separate another um, learning curve we had when we first got the boat we booked up a year's mooring at mercia marina what well, wasn't it a year oh six no months. six months six, six months. months yeah when we first got the boat because we thought bit of protection would, would start off in the marina but we quickly went straight out <laughs> straight straight out of the marina i think out of that six months we were probably only in the marina for about six weeks six weeks so this was a bit of a one not a waste but um it's a bit it was a big chunk of money for not a lot yeah and it's inflated the overall end of year costs so we spent 1400 pounds for six months in mercy marina which we got very little benefit for and we probably probably could have saved some money there. So this, so the end of year cost, our end of year total bill is inflated by that quite a bit. Yeah, which means we've got fourteen hundred pounds to spend next year, <laughs> or fourteen hundred pounds to save. Mm. Or that we don't even have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either way, mm. um, we also added uh, tumble drying onto our list because in the in the deep winter. You can't have your clothes 
hung out in the boat anyway because well a lot of people room. do actually but you just don't like it, it so no. we have to take it to a laundrette yeah but it's also Plus, con condensation yeah, in the it's boat not, it's not great for the boat having all that moisture hanging around in the air it's got to go somewhere and it takes forever to dry so yeah the best thing we we thought to do was just uh whenever we do uh washing bundle it all together take it down the laundrette and stick it in the top takes half an hour a couple of pounds dry. and it's done and you we come and I come back and it's we put it all so away. So we've spent forty pounds on tumble drying over the winter. And we'll, but that is something we'll do next year as yeah, well. Go, so yeah, that's an ongoing. Yeah, we'll, we'll that'll, that'll be an ongoing thing. That. Yeah. Um, now I've, I've also put in there that um, w uh, an initial first year cost. And again, I probably won't have this going forward. So this inflates the, the overall bill as well for twelve months. And this is just miscellaneous. So. Uh, we need new fenders, we needed a lot more rope than what we got with the boat, we needed a new anchor, uh, we needed a few tools and also some boat wax because in the in the summer I wax a boat like every couple of weeks I'm always washing always washing the boat. So we spent £285 on miscellaneous costs. That's £269. Well I've not got my testicles, my spectacles on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah you're right. Two hundred sixty-nine pounds. There you go. I've got this really zoomed up as well. I was trying. I know it's huge on the screen. <laughs> yeah, two hundred sixty-nine pounds. There you go. Um, uh, but again, we'll probably that'll that'll be fifty quid. Just yeah, we'll put we'll keep some money aside every year just in case there's anything that we need to replace or or um buy for the boat. But yeah, that was during our first year. That was a a, a bit more than what it will usually be. I would say. Yeah. Um, and then boat Wi-Fi. So again, there are there is savings here because we got an E um, SIM card and an O2 SIM card in our Wi-Fi router. And we've only ever used EE. EE. If you're thinking about going on an Arrow boat, personally, EE is the way forward. Yeah, I definitely recommend it because it's got coverage seems to be everywhere on the on the. It's never let us down. And O2 just doesn't work. No. So we'll be able to save on that, but. Um, this year, that's cost us £600. £600, but we think we can probably halve that in the coming years. Yeah. So that's that's generally our cost, because what we're not included are groceries. Yeah, so we haven't, in, yeah, we haven't included our car, because wherever you live, um, if you decide to have a car, that you know, we'd have a car if we lived in a house. We haven't included our shopping, um, clothes shopping, um, trips to the pub, because that would have broken <laughs> broken <laughs> Rob's laptop if we'd put that cost in. Um, and eating out and things. But those are all sort of general, co cost of general cost of living that everybody has, no matter where you live. So it's not really associated with the Yeah, bill. and it's all down to individual how you live. Whether you yeah. go to the pub, the type of groceries you, you have, the type of car you have. That, that Our budget wouldn't really reflect on your own budget. So you need to calculate that yourselves. But that's... That's relatively easy, I would have thought. So. The total. So in our first year, we have spent £6,941 living on the boat. But that has been inflated a lot by some learning curves. One around the marina, um, the um, Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi costs, and also those initial costs for getting the boat up and ready to go out on the canals. So we're hoping that next year, um, we're looking around, the, well, this coming year, we're looking around the 5,000 mark. Although there is one cost on that we've not had in this previous year that we will have this coming year um, because our boat is now out of warranty. Um, so we will need to get boat rescue, uh, kind of like AA, but for your boat. So it's River, River Canal Rescue, and that will cost us £175. But we think that's an essential cost, really. Yeah. And something we really want to have because we're always out there. Yeah. Okay. So that's how much it costs it's cost us to live on an Arab boat. That is flexible and you can probably squeeze that down. So we have had some questions come through from um, you guys. So we're going to run through them just now um, and hopefully we'll get them all answered. So Deirdre Spellman asked, how was your run and how much was donated? 
So thank you, uh, Deirdre, for your question and thank you for sponsoring me. That was very kind. And just on that point, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to everybody who supported me um, and sponsored uh, my run. So I ran an ultra marathon um, fundraising for Canal and River Trust um, last week and I raised £377 which is already with Canal and River Trust and will help, um, will go into the pot of maintaining the waterways. The run itself was really good. It was meant to be 31, they lied. The route was 32 <laughs> <laughs> and I managed it in just over six hours. Um, so yeah, it was really, really chuffed and uh, it's not long till my next one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and the next question came from an anonymous poster. Um, but it was basically, would we do anything different um, and would we spec the boat differently if we were to start again? I ask that to you. Um, we spoke about it quite a bit. I think the only consideration, I wouldn't say I'd do it differently and I'm not 100% convinced. Thought about having a semi-trad um, stern. stern because in the winter um, a semi-trad has two doors there's a very back door then an inner door mm -hmm. and i think that would cut down on the breeze and and coming the through draft. the draft coming through now it's not such a problem because we have a draft excluder on the door which stops it um and actually in the stern it, it's possibly just because we've just come out of winter because i know in the summer we use a stern an awful lot to sit out there on deck chairs yeah, and have do. a drink right and it's and we really like that so that's pro that's probably it the other thing might want to go for a 60 footer just, just to get a bit more room just to get a bit more room if i had a 60 footer then i would definitely go for a cruiser stern like we have because you get your three foot inside so but also other than that a carpet in the bedroom oh yes carpets but we're going to do that we're going to fit a carpet in the bedroom ourselves anyway because yeah. because the bottom of the boat is in the water um it the floor can get really cold in it the winter is really cold. Like icy first, cold first thing in the morning Ooh. oh no and and a carpet underneath the pool in the Pullman area yeah yeah those two things that's about it but that's it yeah and that's it otherwise absolutely love the boat still do um and wouldn't change anything okay so jim pike asks um what i better put these on i'm really pretending that i can read without I glasses <laughs> what made you want to spend your life on a narrow boat well, Jim, we did answer this in our video, uh, video two, um, if you want to watch that, um, I do recommend it. <laughs> um, but we did, we chose to spend our life on an narrow boat because we wanted an adventure. We wanted to be able to move, um, explore the inland waterways. And so that's that's the reason, really. Yeah. I think it was the best form of, of adventure we could do with keeping in touch with the family in the UK and them not being too far away. The other sort of adventure we considered was mobile home across yeah, europe or and america. that kind of, or america and we did consider that for a period of time didn't about we? five minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so well because of brexit you can't do you can't do the first one now anyway no <laughs> right so whoever voted for that um gary davis asked what's it oh gary davis is, is it, it proper is it gary davis? davis is it not davis no, I'm, well i'm going to think it's gary davis okay it's gary davis anyway <laughs> What's the record on the wall? And, we, and a few people have asked this, actually. Yeah, so it's just there, um, if you can see it. And it is Herb Alpert, this guy's in love with you. And it was our first dance at our wedding. Yeah, and it's a lovely record. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we can't play it. Otherwise, we can't earn any money from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Chrissy has asked, what has surprised you most in the last year? That's a toughie, wasn't it? That was a toughie word to answer, actually. I think we would say how much we've taken to it and how much we love it. Yeah. At the, at the beginning, we did think about keeping a small house, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but that has now been sold. Yeah. And it's just, we can't see ourselves coming off. No. And I think even now we've done 12 months, so we've done all the seasons. So we know exactly what we're walking into every season, whether it's spring, summer, definitely winter because um, that was a, a nervy time going into winter yeah. on the boat but now I've gone through it it's I actually really like it mm -hmm. I like winter mm -hmm. so yeah that that is surprised at how much we've taken to it and Chrissy also asks where do we store the wood for the burner 
On the stern. On the stern. And we've also got a little um, area underneath the uh, stove where we, we keep our keep our wood. But we tend not to carry too much because we go into a marina every two weeks. So we only, only need two bags at a time. So we don't need a great deal. We need more coal. We have about four or five, in the winter, we have about four or five big bags of coal on the bow instead. Which we keep on the bow, yeah. At all times. So if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, so, uh, please do subscribe to our channel. It's free to do so. Um, and if you hit the notification bell, YouTube will let you know when we next release a video. And please do watch out for our next video as we We've have a, big, a surprise. big surprise. There's something different coming on Thistle and Rose. Yeah, and it's very exciting. Shh, too. no more. That's it. You Stay watch. tuned. Big watch, secret. Watch next time to for find the big out. reveal. Um, and as always, if you've got any questions, do pop them in the comments box below and we'll do our very best to answer them. I'm going off for a drink. <laughs> Look at those numbers again. <laughs> <laughs> so cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Toodaloo. Bye.